Hey, hey, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Straight Up Show podcast. I am your host, Calvin, uh, by myself today, but uh, it's, it's a particular reason why uh, this subject is uh, very uh, dear to me. Uh, you know, as most of y'all know, I've uh, had some issues with my health uh, the past couple of years, one that almost ended my life. So I, I couldn't help but to have uh, this episode, you know, just because people talk about how 2020 is a bad year and I'm like, you know, I'm living my life, you know, and so I can't help but to talk about this subject and just uh, my guest today, uh, a a very good dear friend of mine. Um, I I don't want to waste any time at all. So if y'all can help me walk on Mr. Charles Doo-Wop Dittler. How you doing today, sir? Doing good. Doing good, man. I'm just blessed to be on this side of the ground. Yes, sir. And like I said, man, we was talking before the show and like, People talking about 2020, man, but hey, you know, we we, we both can, exp- uh, can testify that, hey, you only get one life to live and just live it to your fullest, right? Yeah, man. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, 18 was definitely the worst year of my life. Um, and how ironic that, you know, all this other stuff is going on. Um, we're halfway, uh, we're more than halfway through 2020, and it's actually, I can honestly say it's been the best year of mine. So, um you know, obviously my heart goes out to those uh, affected during this pandemic and things uh, such as that. But uh, one thing I know for sure, man, we're going to get through it. Yes, yeah, sir. And like I said, man, I mean, we people are resilient. You are definitely one of the most resilient people that I know. So that's why I had to have you on the show. And like I said, we're not going to waste no time. We're going to get right into it because, uh, man, uh, doo-wop. The first time I met you uh, it was at my boy Izzy's house. Uh, shout out to Izzy. Uh, and the first time I met Charles, man, uh, you, you were playing basketball. You were playing basketball, and you was trash talking to everybody on the court. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, man, he is definitely – and you're from Shreveport, Louisiana, right? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I was born in Shreveport, and then I, I got put in foster care um, at nine years old. So from nine years old, Till about my senior year, I actually grew up in Houghton. Um, so I went to the same high school Dak Prescott went to. Shout out to the Cowboys. Um, but um, so then I ended up uh, coming back to Shreveport and, and, and graduating from Huntington High School my, my senior year. But uh, I claim Shreveport for the most part. And like I said, I'm Houghton boys, man. Y'all some country boys. Yeah, man. It, it, to me, it ain't like the country, man. Just growing up out there and – Right now, it's crazy because over the years, uh, they're starting to move a lot of neighborhoods. So it's like every time I go down there, it's like, man, another neighborhood. It's like, man, if all along the, the country gonna be looking like the city. But, um, but yeah, man, it's it's not like the country growing up fishing, playing sports out out in the open fields. Man, it ain't nothing like it. Yeah, man, and and a lot of you y'all don't know Dua like I know him. Like he is just just a, a good spirit. And there's something that you just, and there's something about doo wop you just can't, you can't put your eye on it. But if you're having a bad day, doo wop will make you feel uh, so much better, man. And like, you, you're well known around the city. You know, uh, your your slogan is "WAP don't stop." <laughs> Where'd you get that from? <laughs> "WAP don't stop." Yep. Yeah. Uh, they they my bu- uh my buddy Michael Cook started calling me that man in my senior year in high school, and I just got to Huntington, uh, 04, 05, and. They were trying to give me a nickname, and we was on the basketball court. And uh, for some strange reason, he said, man, we're going to call you uh, Doo-Wop because your head is uh, shaped like a wop and you do too much. And I was like, what? And, and the crazy part about it is he gave everybody nicknames, and it always stuck, but it was always crazy how he gave them to us. So the next day in practice, Coach Mac Jones uh, blew the whistle. He said, Doo-Wop, what is you doing? And everybody was like, yes, that is it, doo-wop. And then doo-wop stuck. And over the course of years, me being a class clown, always joking, making people laugh, being the life of the party, uh, came about wop, don't stop. And then how ironically, I get into this burn accident a couple of years ago. And um, after all these different surgeries and, and, and things like that I had to endure, um, how fitting is that nickname? Yeah, so. and yeah, and very fitting. And we're gonna actually talk more about uh, your accident uh, coming up next on Side of the Break. Stay tuned, Straight Up Show podcast.
What's up everybody, Brandon here with Straight Up. We want you to be mindful of the importance of wearing a mask out in public. We know it's uncomfortable, but believe it or not, you are saving a life. This virus has hit our community hard and scientists are still looking for a vaccine. So wash your hands, practice social distancing, and most importantly, wear a damn mask. Okay, so now we're back with Charles Duwop Dittler. Uh, Mr. Wop, don't stop, man. Like, how many more nicknames do you have? Uh, as far as I know, that's it. <laughs> I mean, man, growing up, uh, growing up when I was a little boy, um, you know, my name is my name is Charles. Okay, so growing up, my my aunt said I had a big mouth like the cartoon Charlie Brown. So Charlie Brown was actually my nickname growing up as a child. Um, so whenever I hear that name, I'm like, okay, this has to be somebody that knew me when I was a boy. And then, uh, like I said, doo came about as a senior in high school. And then Wop Don't Stop kind of derived from that. But as far as I know, those are the only – now, don't get me wrong. I've been calling some other names, but but those are the three that stick with me well, for sure. Yeah, we don't want to talk about those other names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, talk about those other names. But now, nah. but one thing that stood out to me the most about you is, like I said, at the last break, you said Wop Don't Stop. And you mentioned that you had an accident. And, and – January 2018, uh, something tragedy happened, and uh, a tragedy happened, and um, you have a thing called pain of purpose. So, uh, before we even get into pain of purpose, tell us about the pain part that happened in January 2018. Well, well, first of all, um, it's, it's like I tell people, man. Um, you know, I'm 33 years old, and you know, I, I've been dealing with stuff all my life. You know, growing up. Uh, it was moments where I was homeless. Uh, I was in foster care. I was staying in group homes. I was in shelters on the streets. My mom was, you know, bad on drugs. My daddy left. So as far as I'm concerned, man, I've been surviving all my life dealing with pain. Now, obviously, January 30th, 2018 was probably, you know, obviously by far my most traumatic experience with pain I've ever had to deal with to date. I uh, got off work about 5 o'clock. Uh, I got home, and a couple of friends came over to the house, and they know me. I, they know I, I love starting a fire, bro. Listening to some old, you know, country music, having a, a cold one after work. So uh, I start the fire, and I had originally started it with uh, hydraulic oil. You know, it's real safe, you know. So uh, I had ran out. So I recently filled up a gas can with diesel, and I guess I wasn't thinking, man. I was just moving too fast. And I went to reach for the can after the fire died down, and I, I started to pour what I thought was gas, and even though diesel is dangerous too, but it's not near as combustible as gas. So as I started to pour, man, I hear that, 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 like that snake sound. And when anybody growing up dealing with, you know, in the country burning wood or fire brushes, they know what that sound means. So uh, when I heard that sound, man, it was a little too late and I still had the gas can in my hand. So I tried to reach back and get it, get it out of my hand, but it, I wasn't quick enough. So it blew up on me. It had about, had about two gallons of gas in the can. So it blows up, knocks me off my feet onto the ground. Uh, I'm screaming at this point, uh, yelling, you know, y'all, please help me, help me. I'm on fire, I'm on fire. And uh, they jump on top of me with jackets because it's still kind of cool outside. So the jackets aren't quite, they're they, they not quite helping as much. So uh, thankfully, my ex-girlfriend's dad, uh, Mr. Derry Wright, who I owe the world to, uh, came out of nowhere with a fire extinguisher off his barbecue pit uh, and, and jumped on top of me and uh, ultimately put me out. So uh, I felt myself getting on out of here, man. But um, thankfully, like I said, he had that fire extinguisher because, you know, when you get burned like that, the first thing you die from is the smoke inhalation. So uh, that's that's ultimately what happened. I, I'm not going to lie, man. My son uh, came to my mind, Chance. Uh, and, and, you know, once they put me out, that's the first thing I said. Man, y'all take care of my son, Chance. Take care of him, take care of him. So, um, but, yeah, but obviously besides um, uh, dying, I almost, you know, like I'm about to die. You know, I'm thinking in my head, like, hey, man, y'all put put this put the damn fire. Like, come on. <laughs> y'all help me out, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I can just feel the um, – I can just – I can just – I'm inhaling the smoke, man. So, I'm mm. just – I'm just sitting there thinking about and it's crazy because 10 seconds, boy, that seemed like forever, man. That seemed like forever. So it was 10 uh, seconds? They're just 10 seconds? Yeah, it was, it was roughly about 10 seconds. Yep. Wow. I oh, bet I it felt like an eternity. 
Yeah, it felt like an eternity for sure, man. That's a long time to be on fire, my boy. Oof. Well, so thank by the grace of God, you survived. Um, yes, sir. So you're in the hospital January, February. I mean, you know, just tell us how that was, just recovery. Um recovery it was it was it was rough. Um I did about two weeks in ICU medically induced coma. I caught the uh, infection called Mercer. And uh, it's like, it's, you can, you can care, obviously with my skin and, you know, your wounds being open, um, your lot of, a lot of would catch all kind of, you know, bacteria and stuff like that and deadly bacteria. And I caught an infection called MRSA, man, which can kill you. And um, so I, I was thankful to kind of get over that. And then after I moved out of ICU, they put me in convalescent where I could have, you know, more visitors and things like that. And I wasn't as, um, I wasn't in as much pain as I was before. So they started weaning me off the drugs and stuff like that, the fentanyl, the morphine. Um, but I went through something called the hydro room every day for two to three months. Hydro room is where every day they have to unbandage you of the Curelix bandages and they have to scrub you and wipe you down. Um, obviously to clean the wounds and, you know, to keep bacteria from setting in and things of that nature. So, um, that's, that's one of the, that's, that's the worst thing I ever went through, man. And, uh, I just remember sitting there crying and screaming and, and, and yelling, like, please stop, stop, please. But, um, it's one of those things that had to happen because, um, they had to, uh, scrub the, uh, the dead tissue off and they had to get it to a point to where it's clean. So, uh, I went through that roughly, like I like say, two to three months. And um, I just remember sitting there, man, like, you know, like I tell people, like I said, I, I never asked God, you know, why me? You know, I said, why not me? So uh, as hard as as hard as something that was to deal with, uh, I really wasn't mad at nobody, man. I just knew that it had I had to be going through this for something greater, you know, on the other side. And you, like, you had to learn how to walk in and talk all over again, right? Well, I, I wouldn't say I had I would I wouldn't say I had to learn how to walk, but I was so weak to where I needed help uh, as far as getting back to walk. Like I had to um before they let me out the hospital, you know the little uh what do you call it? The um the little the little stroller thing that you put your hand on and it got the little uh, wheels at the bottom. Yeah. Oh yeah, the the, uh, the, little, the little walker, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I had to walk up and down the hallway with that. So I necessarily I didn't have to learn how to walk. But I definitely had – I needed assistance in walking in order to get my strength back to keep my body up. Okay. And then you said they had the uh, – I know one interview I saw, they said they had to take part of your your thigh and put it on your body? Yeah, they did a whole um, tissue flap. Uh, they took a whole chunk of uh, tissue and, and arteries out of my thigh, and they uh, replaced it to my neck because I was not as mobile uh, after the burn as far as, like, being able to turn and – tilt my head up back you know so they had to uh get a chunk of tissue out of my leg as far as um my chin they had to get a piece of tissue and some arteries out of my arm uh because what they try to do is they try to find a piece of tissue that's uh, remotely close to what's all what, what was there in the beginning so um and it's crazy how the body heals man my leg i mean you can see what i had the 50 staples in my leg but you wouldn't ever tell it was a piece of chunk taken out of it. it it's crazy how the body heals itself. That's a lot to go through, man. I guess I thank God that you're here. And then you're doing all this while still being a dad. That That's what I find amazing is that, you know, I mean, of course, I many dad could probably say that their, their child motivates them, man. But you are pushing, I mean, the love for your son. I mean, if you follow him on social media, you'll see the love of his son just doing this whole process of healing, man. I love that. Yeah, man, I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, whenever, whenever you got a child, man, uh, you know, it's like whenever you – when you cross the threshold of your door after a long day of work, man, that child don't care if you done lost your job. It don't care how many people hate you. It don't care about how many – how much money you done lost. All it knows is this is daddy, this is mama. I need to be loved and taken care of. So – um, it's, it's just no excuses at that point. So you just kind of look at that sweet little face and it, it just kind of reminds you like, okay, boom, whenever I want to give up, I picture his face in my head. 
that's 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 the main reason to keep going. If nothing else, that's the main reason to keep keep pushing forward. And um, whenever God calls me to be home one day, man, um, if if nothing else. I want him to, to be able to to say like, wow, like my daddy left a lasting impression that no matter, you know, what what a hand life dealt, you know, dealt you, you know, it's, it's no excuses and um, you can always overcome, you know, as long as you got faith and believe, you know. So I'm just trying to leave facts. a legacy, man. That's facts, man. Because like I said, just, you know, the love is definitely shown. And like, you know, you went through all that and your son didn't look at you any different. Just, you know, just the love, the love that you gave your son, man, that, you know, man, a lot of fathers really could take, uh, take, take, take from you, man, because, you know, you, you went through so much and here you are still fighting. I mean, like, are you still going, are you still battling through anything right now? Are you still recovered or? Battling through anything? Oh, trying to pay these bills. But uh, <laughs> nah, <laughs> uh, uh, other than that, you know, we all try to get through this pandemic, man, like a tooth and nail, but no, nah, uh, other than that, um, I may have a minor hand surgery um, to kind of open up my hand a little bit more here in the near future. But, man, other than that, um, a year ago today, uh, this month, I lost close to 50 pounds and I uh, started eating better. And, and now I don't eat healthy all the time. I just eat small portions. I don't eat to get full anymore. So, I'm in better shape than I was before I got hurt. So I mean that that I, I remember just seeing one of your videos. I mean, like you just fresh out of a surgery, I think, and you already at the gym just trying to re- recover. I'm like, man, yeah. what is this? <laughs> like, like seriously, it was literally like, "What? Please just stop, man! You just got a surgery. <laughs> How are you? Are you doing like hurdle uh, hurdle jumps already? Like, calm down, man. Like you are just pushing along, man. So. Like, man, that pain, man, really turned into the purpose. And we're going to talk about that purpose uh, coming up on the next side of the break. Tired of the same old boring clothes? Want to support your favorite podcast but don't know how? Well, you're in luck. The Straight Up Show podcast store is finally here. In our Teespring shop, you can find all the merch that tells the world you're keeping it straight up. From T-shirts to masks to even leggings, our store has you covered. Just visit straightupshowpodcast.com and click that merchandise button. That's S-T-R, the number eight, upshowpodcast.com. All right, so we're back from Mr. Mr. Wop, Don't Stop, Charles D. Wop Diddler. Man, an impressive story, man. I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Uh, like me and you both said, man, uh, 2018 was uh, – uh, a crazy year for both of us. It's actually life threatening for both of us, myself included. Yep. Uh, you know, I, and some of you who have who have heard the show know that I almost passed away. Uh, I was I, I actually dealt with smoke and in, uh, inhaling myself. Uh, I lived in a house that had a black that had a fire damage to it, but the owner didn't uh, gut the damage. He just painted over it, so I was breathing and inhaling all that damage. And, you know, I ended up having like I almost passed away. I was in a coma as well. Uh, that was in April of 2018. Not knowing that, and you know, like I said, me and Wop knew each other way before this, but not knowing that uh, Duwop was across town recovering himself. And I, you know, I was wondering why I hadn't heard from him in a while. And all of a sudden, I messaged him and I asked because we both were trach. And uh, uh, Duwop, can you just explain to everybody what a trach is? Um, well, yeah. The, the the trach, um, well, as far as what they when they put it in my neck, uh, my when I got burned, they uh, my neck started swelling up. So um, in order to give me, you know, to get that oxygen in me to keep me from breathing, they had to insert a hole at the bottom of my neck. Uh, this is a small tube. Um, I don't know. The tube is about hmm, I don't know three to three to four, three to five inches long. It's a tube. Yeah, like three to four inches long. Yeah. Yeah, that they stick down your neck and they have a little cap on the end that they put on there. Um, that way, you know, just uh, nothing kind of gets in or anything like that. Um, matter of fact, uh, I couldn't even talk for a second. Uh, they had to put a special cap on there. Uh, it has something to do with the vocal cords or whatever, but uh, it's amazing. When they put that cap on the end of that trach, man, uh, I was able to talk again. I was like, wow, you know, but – but basically, that, that trach is used to give you another form of uh, in, inhaling that oxygen to, to keep you alive. 
Right. And that's something that I messaged you about because I was so nervous, man. Like, man, I don't know if you remember me messaging you, but, man, but like, like I said, y'all, Doo-Wop is in the middle of recovery himself. And I was recovering. And he took the time out to actually message me. And, man, Doo-Wop, let me tell you, man, because we both don't have our traits anymore. We're, we're both trait free. But, man, Doo-Wop, just you messaging me really kept me motivated because I mean, I always looked up to you, man, because like I said, you just outgoing and you know, you, 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 I don't think you have any enemies at all, but, uh, That's what I know you, of. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you really, you really helped me out, man. And, and, and I know it's just a trait and you were, and I was just having breathing problems. I had lung issues, but man, just the fact that you were over there, I didn't know how, how bad off you were. And, mm -hmm. uh, but just being in the recovery room and in my, in my hospital bed and you in your hospital bed and you telling me to keep pushing, like that gave me a sense of purpose. Uh, and oh, until yeah. this day, until this day, man, I, I mean, I, I can't stress enough how much just you messaged me back and forth while I was in the hospital, man. Like I, I brag about you all the time. I, I, I just can't thank you enough, brother. I really appreciate that. Oh yeah, man. It's all good. I appreciate it, man. That's, that's and, what we're uh, here for, man. Yes, sir. And like I said, dude, you gave me a sense of purpose. And so, you know, you have a sense of purpose. You know, you're recovering, you're eating better. You know, you can you can play around, run around with your son now. Like, but you you still haven't stopped at all. Like I said, WAP don't stop. No, you, man. You're going around giving everybody a sense of purpose and being motivated. And like, so if you can, just just go in, go in detail about your whole pain to purpose initiative. Well, yeah, uh, uh, um, last summer, um, uh, I was around the same fire barrel that, that I had almost died on and, um, I had lit it and I said, it was my first time actually encountering it. Cause I, I had lit it kind of like from a mental standpoint, like, okay, yeah, this is the rematch. Like you got me the first time, but I'm back. So I sat down outside, lit the fire barrel. Uh, I was, uh, drinking a bottle of water, listening to some old school music and it hit me pain of purpose. And although, although we've all heard Paint the Purpose, I didn't invent that, but um, I said as far as going forward with my uh, motto and having a good slogan uh, for a, a campaign, if you will, I said, I want to name it Paint the Purpose. Now what I have to do is I have to get it on paper. I have to get a nice logo. So after several attempts with several people, um, I come across a young lady and she said that she would be able to help me out with it. So I'm like, okay, this is somebody else. So I literally sent her um, a kind of sketch of like how I wanted it. And I, I explained to her, she sent me back the second, first one, second one. She sent me back that third one. I was driving. I pulled over on the side of the road. You know how, you know, you ever been shopping and you look at something like, you don't have to, you don't have to like, eh, you don't have to look left or right. When you yeah. see it, you know, that's it. Yeah. And so the pain I had to be broken up in red to sim to be symbolic of pain. The, the, the purpose had to be bold, white, uh, to represent uh, hope and, and, and purity and heaven. And the, the T and the O, uh, it's, it's just the T and the O. But in my eyes, I wanted to enlarge the T just a little bit because, man, out of all the ups and downs I've been in life, when I've made money, when I've had not a dollar in my pocket and uh, um, um, a, a sandwich to eat, man, God was always the center of, of all that. He, he was always the focus, the focus point. So um, that's what, that's where the actual style logo came from. And, um, and so 50 shirts was made in March of this year. And the next thing I know, more shirt orders are being added. I'm like, hold on, wait, 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 what's going on? And then the next thing you know, two months later, I have a nonprofit. I'm getting messages. Uh, they're doing my story in the UK. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. Like, this might end up being something. And so now, with my nonprofit organization, I'm simply trying to motivate and inspire people all across the world that no matter what you've been through, we, we all have a pain. That we've all, you know, dealt with something, whether it be mental, physical, spiritual, whatever the case may be. And, and, you know, regardless of who you are, there's somebody out there right now listening. There's somebody that's been in your same situation, but they chose to get off their butt and do something about it. So we're going to go through the pain. Okay, that's fine. We went through it. Like I said, we cried. You know, it was rough. But now, now what are we going to do as far as finding our purpose uh, out of it? So 
that's that's where the gist of that's that's where how kind of everything started, you know, for me. So right. and man, that's uh that's deep. That's real deep, man. Just pain to purpose, you know, red to white. And yep, man, that's <laughs> That's 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 a godsend, man. And like I said, you like I said, the story is going all the way to the UK. Like, I man, yeah. what, what was your thought when you saw your story going to the UK? Man, well, it, it wasn't a surprise because uh, a journalist um, with the Metro newspaper over there, which is a big big journal over there, he actually got in touch with me first, and I'm like, at first, I'm thinking like, y'all want to talk to me? Y'all want to do my story? Who am I? You know and um, so he, he got some pictures from me and things like that. And man, three days later, I looked up, woke up one morning and I had a couple of inboxes from people over in the UK. Like, man, we saw your story, whatever, whatever, you know, I'm like, man, this is really happening right now. There's somebody in the UK that know about me and know who I am. So it was definitely a humbling experience, um, you know, to say the least. But, um, but yeah, man, it, it, it was just one of those confirmations, like, like, like God telling me, like, okay, it's about to begin, so you need to get ready. And um, in life, you know, um, I think that's what has to happen a lot of times. You know, um, don't get me wrong. I mean, we, we want to live a good, positive life, but how boring would it be not to have to go through anything in life? Everything just peaches and cream? Like, like that's, that's too easy. So uh, sometimes we have to get uncomfortable in order – to finally realize what our true calling is and what we were actually put on this earth to do. So I went from making a hundred thousand dollars a year in the oil field, a nice house, money in the bank, nice truck, you know, my family to in the blink of an eye, everything was changed. I had to be, God put me in an uncomfortable position and it's the best thing that ever happened to me because now I'm in a position to where I can help other people all across the world. So if I had to do it again, without a doubt, I, I wouldn't hesitate. And like I said, man, you about to put me in tears, bro, man. Just, just <laughs> like seriously, man, because I mean that's that's a, that's a life lesson that a lot of people don't like to hear, uh, yep. but it, 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 it's reality. And like yep. you said, man, you know you've been, you know, I think somebody said that you know on, on the ladder to your success, uh, be careful because you know you can always fall down your ladder, you know. Yep. And. Uh, so just, I mean, if you're out there listening, you know, and, and like I said, do you come from a foster home, you've been from city to city, you, you, you've been a father, you've been a, a, a burn victim and, you know, and you still, like I said, just walk, don't stop, man. And so y'all, he is a motivation. He is an inspiration. Uh, if you hear him, I, you know, like I said, I know him, you know, so just, I would definitely say, take this as a lesson, you know, whatever you're going through hardships, you know, I look at Duwap. You know, he was someone's hospital bed, giving me advice about. Because I mean, honestly, I, I was at a point to where I wanted to give up. I was at that point to where I had everything going good my way, and then tragedy struck, and I wanted to give up. And then here, he, here he is Duwap on the side of the <laughs> down the street. Hey, in the hospital bed. Hey, don't give up. It's just a trait. You, you get it out. You, you know, it don't be, be forever. And so, um, yeah. And so, man, just man, pain the purpose. So. Thank you, Duop, for coming on our show today. Uh, but before we go, how can people actually get in touch with you or support your nonprofit and paying the purpose or actually get a get a uh, 4X t-shirt? <clears throat> yes. Um, well, on my uh, on my social my social media uh, Facebook page is actually uh, Pain and the number two, and then Purpose on Facebook. On Instagram, we're uh, everything lowercase Pain, uh, the word two, underscore purpose uh my email is pain the number two purpose the number 18 at gmail.com and i'm i'm also I've, when y'all go to these social media sites i've already uploaded the link to shop pain to purpose.com that'll take you directly to the website so you can order merchandise charles do what dealer mr wap don't stop thank you yes, sir, sir. Keep on Appreciate pushing, it, man. man. Keep on inspiring, man. We love you, brother. Oh, yeah. Look out too, man. Hey, everybody. Lee here. And guess what? The reviews are in, and the Straight Up Show podcast is a hit. Don't believe me? Well, listen to what one of our guest panelists, Dr. Monique Thompson, has to say. 
listening, y'all listening to Straight Up and support this podcast because I listened in before I came on the show. I liked what I heard. They're really focusing on keeping things real and being real with you. And I like that approach. So you guys support this podcast. So if you want to listen, donate to the show, have a subject idea, or even want to be a guest, just contact us at straightupshow at gmail.com. That's straightupshow at gmail.com. Wow. I mean, what an incredible story. Uh, Charles Dittler, uh, I call him Doo-Wop, Doo-Wop Dittler. Um, man, thank you so much once again for uh, coming on the Straight Up Show podcast and just telling your story. It's a story that uh, that needs to be heard, uh, especially now and then. And uh, he's been able to share his story with others and give hopes to and purpose to those uh, burn victims, not just burn victims, but others who need to hear his message, to hear his story of survival and to keep uh, fighting. Uh, he's actually impressed so many people, not only uh, in the UK, but he's called the eye of uh, his hometown uh, fellow classmate and fellow Halton Buccaneer, uh, Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott. Uh, him and his brother Tad were uh, seen wearing the Pain of Purpose uh, t-shirt. Make sure you go to Pain of Purpose uh, that website to get your merchandise to help out uh, Charles's Pain of Purpose nonprofit uh, program to help people uh, like him uh, with the same similar story. Charles, like I said, is a special light. Uh, when I first met him, great guy, full of spirit, and uh, I think that's kind of why I had to have him on the show because, you know, battling with the same injury, you know, near death, and here he is laying in his bed giving me hope. So that's something that, you know, you really don't get from most people, and that's kind of why I have this show. Um, Charles talked about his pain and uh, what defined his purpose uh, in life, and one thing I don't, don't really talk about much, and uh, is my grandmother. She passed away in 2016. Uh, this year, uh, it'll be two, it'll be four years. And so, uh, a lot of that pain, it was it, losing anybody is hard in itself, uh, but losing her caused so much pain. Uh, I didn't know how to grieve with it. I was trying to run away from home, like go uh, away from my family and isolate myself, and because I was depressed. And you know, I was doing things that were very out of character of me. Now, this is very personal. Uh, and then the accident I had was in April, and I was in a coma for like a week. And I just thought that my life was over with. Here I was in trait, have a hole in my throat, and I didn't know if I was going to live or survive, uh, live or die. And and talking to Charles. People like Charles. I mean, I want to give a shout out to uh, Juan Zuniga as well uh, in Shreveport. But those two really kind of made me go figure out that there's more than life just to deal with the pain. And, you know, that's why I have this podcast. So I can tell my story and, you know, and have people like Charles go and say, hey, you may be going through something right now. Uh, you may feel like, you know, there's no hope, but there is. You have a bigger purpose in life. There's no need to give up. It's okay to cry. It's okay to just to feel like you want to give up, but don't. You have a bigger purpose. We can wipe away the tears. You can lean on me. You can lean on Charles, but we, we're we in your corner. You have a bigger purpose in life. And it may take time to find it, but don't give up the fight. You have to keep fighting to find your purpose in life. And that's all what we want to do. Make people happy. Make your purpose in life be known. And it, it's hard to deal with my grandma being lost. It's a, a battle that I'm dealing with. But I know that her purpose, the sacrifice that she's made, was to make sure I had a better life. And I know she wouldn't want me being sorrowful that she's gone. So I have to figure out my purpose and move on without her. It's hard. I have my days. I'm pretty sure Charles has his days. But we have to keep fighting. So I'll use this platform, a straight up show. I use this platform and have people like Charles on the show to give their story. So maybe we can influence you to find your purpose and never give up. Love you all. That's it for our show, guys. Season two is about to be a wrap up. Uh, I want to thank Charles once again for coming on the show. Hey, 
uh, one more episode, and then that's the end of season two. It's been a great ride. Uh, I've enjoyed this season having stories like Charles on the show. We hope that you join the conversation with us. Make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms. Listen to us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, Thank you so much to those who bought a lot of our merchandise at StraightUpShowPodcast.com because, I mean, you all bought a lot of I Just Straight Up Voted t-shirts and uh, memorabilia. Thank you so much for that. Uh, That's it for our show today. We want to thank all those that helped out. Uh, make sure you visit our website at straightupshowpodcast.com. Look at all the material you want to donate to the show. Be a guest. Go on there. Straightupshowpodcast.com. That's S-T-R, the number eight, up, showpodcast.com. Listen, until then, there's only one rule to our show is you have to be straight up.